everybody. Now can you hear me? So hopefully you can hear me. I am so sorry. I turned it off because I've got my grandkids here this morning and I thought I'll turn it off till just before we go in and start. So hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Now, can you hear me? So, so, okay, let me turn this down. I wondered why I couldn't hear myself on the little one that's going there. So, thank you, everybody. I just saw all your messages. So, thanks, Sally. Thanks, Lisa. So, let me just go back briefly then to this chart. So, um, I guess let's just go back really quickly. I'm Leanne Carriers from Feng Shui and More. So, I'm a feng shui practitioner. I work with traditional classical feng shui, which is flying stars, form, chi mon bazi, all those sort of um, older forms of feng shui uh, and utilize, thank you, and utilizing the energy of your work and your spaces. So today I'm going to go through in this short time we've got together this little chart here about the energies in our spaces. Um, now, Feng Shui is wind and water. It's about movement. So it's about being at your front door and imagining where would the water flow, where would the wind flow. Um, and the places that it doesn't flow is where we, we need to look at. So um, we've got three forms of luck in, and Feng Shui forms the earth luck that we have. So our heaven luck is what we're born with. It's our talents, our gifts and that that we have. Um, our earth luck's feng shui and our ren heaven luck is our uh, human luck is what I talk about all the time in our groups and, and when I'm talking is it doesn't matter how good your destiny is. It doesn't matter how good your feng shui is. If you don't contribute with your um, heaven um, human luck, then you are never going to get the results that you would get if you contributed. So it's an exchange of energy. It's, it's all about energy. So, um, and then of course we have our universal luck, which is, which is something that we utilize as well. So imagining that water, that little stream of water and that wind going through your space, then that is what feng shui energy is. And that's what we're trying to capture when we have really positive auspicious chi. When it can't flow, so if you stood at your front door and you watched where it flowed, where it can't flow or where you couldn't see it moving, that's stuck chi. And generally that's where we have our least auspicious energy. So it's really important to know where those are and to unstuck them. Um, and that can be through blessings and cleansings and things or just putting making some space, you know, making more room for things. Um, I can always go into a space and I know exactly what's going on generally from where things are located and gathered and where the chi is stuck. And I know what it is that the home or the space is struggling with because where that stuck chi is, is generally what's causing what's going on within the space. So let's get into it. Let's just get in and do these numbers. So the numbers really aren't really going to make much difference to you, but the energy of the space as well. So I always say um, that choose the areas, one or two areas of your home that you want to create a better chi or a better energy around and then look at what does that area need, okay? So if finances, you feel like your money's coming in and out and it's flowing really quickly, like it's like it just, you walk in with a pay packet and it's out the back door, then it's probably in and around our lost chi. Now, bearing in mind, this is not your home natal chart. This is just working with the annuals of the year, but you can do some things that are going to make this easier to manage. So simple things like in the northeast of your home, placing a bowl of water outside your house is preferable. If you're in an apartment and you can't do that, then a clear vase of water with some bamboo or anything that's like your elephant with a raised trunk if you use feng shui products, the blue rhino, that type of thing. But the water is the key element here. Um, that's working with our five elements, the fire, earth, metal, water and wood. And they're very, very important when we're looking at feng shui and how we're working with the energy. So 
if you live in a property that's got a yard and then you could you might have your swimming pool there you might have a pond there you might have a water feature there so bearing in mind again like i said this is not your natal chart it's just the annual year of the energy for the year of the rabbit and you will be able to utilize these small but simple little techniques that are going to change the energy without disrupting your natal chart too much. So again, in the Northeast, then you might wanna put some water and a vase of water. Don't put bamboo in soil uh, or with rocks or anything like that, just a clear vase of water. Um, and water outside your space is preferable to water inside your space. So that's important as well. Um, if you find your house is a little bit quarrelsome, there's lots of dispute, lots of little arguments going on, little niggling things like, you know, with kids having a go at each other and things going on, then you might want to look at the southeast of your space. Now, if this is happening in your home, all you need to do is bring a little bit of fire element in there. Don't bring too much, just start small and bring a small amount until you feel the energy settle down. This will be located probably somewhere else in your house, but if your natal chart has double this energy, then you might wanna just do a little candle in there, like even a tea light candle, just to start the energy and get the energy started to, to dissipate. We don't want a lot of water and we don't want a lot of plants in this space, okay? Because we don't wanna enhance this energy. If this energy is overstimulated, it can lead to you having more issues with, um, uh, you can have more quarrels that lead to get further and it can actually escalate into like really big disputes. So you wanna make sure that you add in some fire elements, some red colors, um, you know, if you've got a fire pit in your garden, then use the fire pit, get that started and get some of that energy going. It might be that if it's a kitchen area, then you've probably got a lot of fire going on with your stove and your cooking. But if you're someone who doesn't do a lot of cooking, then put in a little bit of energy as well. If it's a bedroom, add some red boxes in there or something that represents that color. But um, definitely just to start the process and to settle that energy down, a um, tea light candle would be the best. Now, one of the areas that we really wanna look after this year is the Northwest and it's the patriarch. So it's the father of our children who lives in the house with us. Or if you're a woman in the house and you're the head breadwinner, this energy is about you as well. So make sure that you take a look at the Northwest. It's really important to see uh, that you don't have any fire in this area. You want to limit the fire. The Northwest is also known as Heaven's Gate. So you don't want fire in this area. You want to bring in some metal elements. You want to bring in some um, yellows and lemons and met like lemon color. <laughs> lemons, I guess, would work. But you want to bring in the energy of um, metal to this space. Now, um, water can also help in here, but metal's the strongest uh, in here. If you're a user of feng shui products, then the five element pagoda is really good in this space um, because it's the metal and represents the five elements. So this area also represents travel and it represents your mentors and your helpful people. So if you use this space as an office, then make sure you bring these elements in because this energy is disruptive. It can create challenges for us. Um, the emperor is not ruling at the moment from a chi perspective, so we need to appease him. So that's the area of there. It's also important if you are a manager or a leader. So if your partner is a, a manager or has his own business, has lots of staff underneath him, then you wanna make sure that you do bring that element. This is probably one of the most important areas if finances and um, career and management are really important to your space. So the last of our chi that's not so auspicious is in our uh, east and it's our health and well-being. Now without health, it's difficult to have wealth. So it's really important to take a look at this space. It represents the family and it represents our elders. So 
Uh, really important to bring things in of the metal element here as well. Now, don't bring a lot. Just start small. Bring a few pieces in. And if your health is really good, you don't have a bedroom or you don't have an office or really don't use the east of your home, then you don't need to worry as much about this space. Think of another space that's more important for you to think about. Because remember, we're only choosing two or three spaces that you're going to go and use this energy for, okay? So um, the East is representing our well-being. It does affect people in our entire family because it's generally the whole family that is included in this space. If someone's currently unwell and has a bedroom here, I definitely think things like the Hulu. It's this shape, it's the calabash. And it's created from brass, okay? So brass or metal is really, really important in that space for you to bring in. Okay, so on to some more positive chi for the year that we've got. The Taji is the heart of your home. It's the heart center. It's the reason we buy a home. It's the lesson the home has for us. So this year, it's got our creativity and our romance energy. Now, this energy is for the whole space. So everybody who lives in your space, whether you've got house guests, flatmates, family members, or you live on your own, this energy affects everybody within that space. Now, it's an awesome, awesome energy. It is great for uh, being creative. It's great for romance as well. But you don't want too much wood or water in this space, okay, because we don't want to overstimulate the romance. We don't want to bring in an extra if we're in a relationship already. So if you're already in a committed relationship, then just watch how much water and, and wood that you've got in that space. If you're looking for romance, then bring in some wood, bring in some water, bring in pairs of things, bring in things that represent that person to you. If you happen to have a bedroom, like some of our older Queenslanders have a bedroom in this space and it is your space, then look at the artwork that you've got in this space. Does it represent a happy couple? Does it re represent you being joyful with a partner? Um, one of the greatest trends is the single female nude paintings, which are beautiful, 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 beautiful. But remember, there's no other partner in that painting. So you might want to bring in some paintings that have got a couple and whatever that is to you just make sure it's two of okay whatever it means for you creativity wise if your office is in this space or if it's your central area of your house really really good space to be bringing in some energy around your creativity around your work branding and that sort of thing is really good as well so um then our next one is our Victory Chi. This is in the Southwest. And ladies, this represents you. It represents your energy. It is beautiful after last year's energy that we had. So this is our, our victory. It's our mentors. It's our nobles. It's the people that have already been successful that are coming in to be supportive of you, that are coming in to help you do what it is that you're trying to do. So look out. If your office is in this space, watch for emails, phone calls, messages that are around things that might awaken you to some new opportunities because these are really, really important. Um, you might stumble across an old friend or someone that you've worked with years ago. I had a client the other day who said they just happened to be looking on the web, on the internet, and then they went down that little rabbit hole. It took them to another website that led them to the perfect outcome for a project that they're working on, led them to the right people, the places, and everything just fell into place. And they just said, it's what they would normally do to get projects done. But the difference in the energy was that it was so much more easy. It was so much more fluid. So if that's what's happening for you, it's your mentors and nobles working with you. And these people have already done what you're wanting to do and they've been successful. So use this energy up. It's really, really good energy. And this represents you as the head female of the house. So it's very good chi in this space. Uh, what can you bring into there? You can bring into that space um, 
things that are water elements. And just be careful you don't bring too much water because the southwest represents earth and water and mud can get, water and earth can get a bit sticky and a bit muddy, but bring in some water. Put a water bowl outside. Uh, bring in some metal, a statue, a Kuan Yin. Um, anything that represents some success to you and support to you. So a bowl of coins, you know, if it means wealth to you, if your office is there and you're trying to build up your wealth in your office, there is nothing wrong with building up wealth, I can assure you. So this one's our heaven chi in the West. So this is a great space if you journal, if you want to me um, meditate, if you want to ask the universe for what you're after. I know so many in this group are people who, you know, tap into universal energy, you, you, you know, ask for what it is that you're after. So be very careful in the West that you're asking in a positive light. You're being very clear about what you're asking for, because this is the energy that will provide it. Now, the West represents our children as well. So it's great to encourage our kids to tap into this energy and to get them to be positive around the thoughts that they're having and what they're asking for. Here you could put your Kuan Yin. Your Kuan Yin is a beautiful energy or anything that represents your heaven chi, whatever statue or icon or idol or uh, picture or painting or whatever it is for you. It doesn't have to be um, Chinese related. It could be of any faith, of any religion, of any practice, of anything that you believe represents your heaven chi and what you are going to call upon to support you in what your endeavors are this year. It's a beautiful energy. So let's get in and use it. Now, wealth, there is nothing wrong with building wealth. Wealth is important as we're finding in today's current climate. How important is it to have an extra dollar in our pocket when we've got so much going on in our currency at the moment with interest rate rises, with um, inflation being high, with all these things happening? Currently, cash in the bank is really important. And all the masters will tell you this year that having extra money put aside is important. Wealth can help you do so much for others. It can help you support other people. It can help you support others in your business. Let's face it, if you've got a strong, flourishing business, how many people are you employing that you're supporting and you're encouraging them to grow and to become great in what they're doing? So think differently about it, particularly if you are someone who is in a holistic practice or service and you give um, energy as a gift for others please remember that that gift is worth an energy exchange and it's nothing wrong with it being of a monetary value. Now, when we're looking at the south of our area of our house, that's where this wealth is coming in. Now, the eight is dissipating. It's getting a little bit less uh, energetic. It's getting a little bit quieter because we're about to go into period nine in 2024, which is a whole other wonderful experience that's about to come. So this is that transition year where this energy weakens and we're going into a stronger nine. Now, if you want to get this energy going, it's also around what the world sees of you on the outside. So add a little bit of fire to this. Um, add a little bit. And remember, your reputation is also going to fuel your wealth this year. So make sure what you're putting out into the world is what you want the world to see and what you want them to know. Um, so fire, fire is good. Anything that represents money to you or wealth to you is really important. If you've got a business here or you sit in the south of your business, really strong energy for you. Now, the North is our future money. So whereas in the South, it's about what we do on an hourly basis, the work energy we put in. The North is about um, our residual wealth. It's about wealth that we're building for the future. It's getting much stronger. So this is very, very important energy to use this year. So make sure that you use this energy and that you are tapping into it because this is going to be the wealth energy of next year and it's getting very strong for us already. This is a great space for career. If you're looking at changing a career, doing something different, then use the energy of this space. Great for writing resumes. It's great for doing anything creative around your business. 
just check into that space and get in and use it. So um, my favorite, favorite saying is Chin Ni Kun Tian. And it is about energy. It's about we all have energy around us. You have exactly the same energy around you this year as what I have. The only difference is our natal charts might be just a little bit different which means that some areas where you're going to add some fire element, you may not want to add as much. But for most areas, you can do these little tips that I've given you today without worrying too much about the energy being disrupted in the wrong way. If for any reason you are feeling like things just aren't quite right when you've done something, then stick a question or message into this um, feed here and I will make sure that we check it and we come back and answer any of your questions. If you want to know more, then please check out our website and check out our offers that we've got for you. Um, we do offer a free 20 minute chi chat, which is just about getting to know you, you getting to know me and me helping you get some things sorted ready for the year that's just started. We've only just started our feng shui year on the, and I'm just watching the time, on the 20, on the 4th of February this year. So so thank you, Sally. Um, thank you so much for having me here this morning. I did say before we started when I didn't have sound on, thank you. This is an awesome group of women and people who are doing uh, wonderful, wonderful things. And it has been so inspiring to see you, Sally, get such a beautiful group together. I want to thank you for the opportunity. And please remember that even take one or two little things today to be able to change the energy nothing will change unless you make a change okay so even one thing all right happy feng shuiing everybody and thank you for having me here